COVID-19 vaccinations in Nigeria commenced on March 5th, 2021, with 4 million doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine supplied by the COVAX facility. According to the head of Nigeria's immunization agency, Dr. Faisal Schweib, the first phase resulted in the successful vaccination of 3.9 million, give or take a few, eligible persons across the 36 states and federal capital territory, representing 98% utilization of the vaccines. However, as Nigeria battles the third wave of COVID-19, efforts have been geared towards the second phase of the vaccination exercise, which started yesterday. Starting the Moderna vaccines supplied by the U.S. government, the second phase is designed to capture older adults aged 50 years and above and those with comorbidities aged 18 and 49 years of age. Now joining us from Abuja to discuss the phase two rollout and the capacity of the states to provide the necessary storage facilities to preserve the Moderna vaccines is Dr. Faisal Schreib, Executive Director of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Welcome to the program, Dr. Shaib. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, Dr. Shaib, uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, very quickly, uh, if you could just share with us uh, the situation report, particularly with regard to, uh, you know, the second phase and uh, what has been done so far with the uh, commencement of the uh, immunization vaccination for the second phase uh, uh, yesterday and what the future plans are uh, with regard to uh, getting more vaccines to be able to reach the target, as uh, you know, uh, publicized, of so 40% immunization rate in 2021 and 70% in 2022. Right, even before uh, we launched the second phase of the vaccination rollout yesterday, uh, we had a lot of preparations ahead of this launch, you know, taking the lessons that we learned uh, from the first phase and uh, modifying it, working with uh, NAFDAC, uh, the NCDC, uh, and the Federal Ministry of Health. Uh, what we've been able to pull together uh, is a very robust uh, second phase plan uh, that started yesterday. Uh, in this plan, uh, we're going to be uh, focusing on all uh, Nigerians that are 18 years and above. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking at how we can also integrate with other primary health care services. We recognize that apart from COVID-19, there are other diseases that are plaguing uh, Nigerians. So we're going to be using the platform of that immunization uh, to also do screening for uh, common diseases such as uh, malnutrition in children, uh, hypertension, diabetes in, in adults. So those screening uh, uh, challenge, uh, challenges that we find in primary health care centers will be alleviated uh, by this whole of family approach. So there is a lot of excitement in the uh, primary health care space around how we can do a better job of integrating and providing uh, vaccines to uh, Nigerians. It's also very, very instrumental that just last night, uh, we got just about uh, 700,000 doses of uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, as donation uh, from uh, the UK uh, government. And uh, this will be an opportunity uh, for us to uh, actually uh, give those Nigerians uh, who had taken the first dose of the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine their second uh, doses. And um, we're expecting additional doses uh, from the COVAX facility, uh, namely uh, AstraZeneca and then Pfizer vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine amounts to about 3.5 million uh, doses. And we're going to be getting uh, the J and J vaccine, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, uh, in the course of the next uh, few months, uh, terminating right around uh, Q1 of uh, 2022. Overall, we figure that uh, we'll be able to get uh, close to uh, 45 million uh, doses um, uh, of the of different vaccines, uh, and we'll be able to, uh, you know, give uh, protection against uh, the uh, COVID-19 virus. Well, I'd like to commend you on a great job so far, but obviously there are questions, especially in regards to the Delta variant that's wreaking havoc all over the world and talk of boosters. How do you balance the fact that the vast majority of Nigerians have not even had one vaccine with the need to provide booster vaccinations to protect the population that have had vaccines? Right, so uh, the problem of uh, access to 
uh, COVID-19 vaccine uh, is a global problem. It's not a Nigerian problem. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we've seen uh, with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic is how developed countries uh, have actually moved towards vaccine nationalism. They hoarded large quantities of vaccines for their populations. Sometimes, you know, close to 10 times what they actually require. Uh, but thank God, due to uh, the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari uh, and uh, the, Secretary to the uh, Secretary, General, uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, uh, we've seen a situation where engagements with uh, countries such as the United Kingdom, uh, United States, has led to these countries actually releasing some of those vaccines that uh, they hoarded. Uh, you may be uh, aware that uh, about two weeks ago, the United States government actually released about 4 million and 80 doses of the Moderna vaccine and then see how we've gotten, uh, you know, almost 700,000 doses of uh, the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine through the United Kingdom. Now, it is because of uh, the challenge with, uh, you know, uh, the uh, supply of vaccines, uh, especially due to vaccine nationalism and the fact that pharmaceutical companies are trying to catch up with the global demand, uh, that that is why we're, we're experiencing relatively low uh, access to uh, vaccines. But I can imagine that in the course of the next few months, uh, we're going to get um, additional vaccines. The federal government has procured close to uh, 40 million doses of uh, the J&J &J vaccine. That is a single shot uh, vaccine. That means 40 million people will be covered uh, by that uh, vaccine. So uh, we know that right now uh, the demand outstrips, um, uh, you know, the uh, supply. But we can see that changing in the course of the next uh, few uh, months and then we'll be able to uh, adequately vaccinate Nigerians. The good thing though is the fact that um, whether it's the AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, whether it's Moderna vaccine or the J&J &J vaccine, all of these vaccines are able to confer protection uh, from severe disease, hospitalization and death of, you know, due to the Delta uh, variant of uh, the COVID-19 virus. All right, uh, thank you so much and uh, congrats on the launch yesterday, but please confirm for me uh, the AstraZeneca you got is from the UK. It's not AstraZeneca Korea. Uh, because when we spoke to somebody at uh, NAVDAC, uh, when we spoke to the DJ of NAVDAC, she said there's another AstraZeneca Korea that's supposed to come in. Uh, how about the, the donation from the Sinopharm Chinese vaccine? How has that been? And what would be the modus operandi for this vaccination? You know, because the last one, uh, we said we should go register at a portal. At some point, they scrapped the portal system and things like that. What is it going to be like? And how quick will it get to Lagos? Because some people went there yesterday and they said it's going to get here in September. So just, just three questions. Just confirm for me, please, sir. Right. So the donations that we're getting uh, are from the UK government, right? Uh, so the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine is produced from different plants. You know, the first batch that we got in March uh, was through Serum uh, Institute of India, right? So. This particular, uh, you know, uh, consignment is through coming through the uh, UK government, even though uh, they uh, were produced uh, in a plant in, in in South Korea. Now, in terms of uh, our plans for uh, this phase, uh, the portal is now open. People can register uh, for their and schedule their vaccinations. And it is not correct that uh, the vaccines will not start. Uh, the vaccinations will not start until September. Actually, we expect that in the next day or two, uh, uh, we will be able to uh, start vaccinations uh, in, in Lagos State. Uh, we are at the point where we are now deploying the vaccines uh, to the states uh, because we had to go through a careful process of labeling, uh, barcoding these uh, vaccines so that uh, along with NAVDAC, we'll be able to trace them all the way uh, to the health facilities. That is very, very critical for vaccine accountability because one thing that we're doing at the Presidential Steering Committee is to make sure that uh, we don't have an influx of fake vaccines. So being able to track and trace every single vial is very, very important. This is why we're taking our time. Even though there's an urgency to send the vaccines to, to the states, uh, we had to work with NAVDAC to make sure that there's proper labeling of this vaccine and then we'll be able to track them. Uh, right now, we're engaging uh, with uh, the uh, entity that is going to deploy them uh, using flights uh, to the states. Uh, so most of the states that have airports will be receiving their vaccines, you know, starting uh, today. Uh, those that have, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, that we have to go uh, using road transport as well. Uh, so we're really prepared, uh, you know, to roll out the vaccinations, uh, you know, all across the country. But first, the vaccines have to get there, and our plan is to try and get those vaccines uh, there before uh, before Thursday at, at the latest. Again, uh, this depends on uh, you know how uh, we're able to quickly uh, wrap up the the, uh, the the finalization of uh, the labeling and then uh, ensuring uh, that uh, the states are ready. So we're working with the state making sure that uh, they are coaching equipment of all functioning and that uh, when the vaccines are deployed they will be uh, held uh, you know put um, securely and then making sure that they are potent well uh, dr shaib uh, we'll take a short break and after the break the conversation will continue please stay with us we'll be right back Welcome back to The Morning Show. Here on the Arise News Channel, our guest is still Dr. Fisar Shayu, Executive Director of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Dr. Shayu, thank you very much for staying with us. Well, it's good to hear that we now have 700,000 additional doses of the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine and that we have Moderna, uh, about 1.08 million uh, doses from the United States. And an additional uh, 177,600 uh, doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But many Nigerians who took the uh, AstraZeneca uh, vaccine uh, and who have not been able to have their second dose because of the suspension, they are asking, is it possible for them to go ahead and take uh, maybe Johnson & Johnson or take uh, Moderna, uh, particularly as in some other parts of the world? Uh, some countries are doing mixing and matching. Um, is it possible to do so in Nigeria? And then why is it that the Johnson & Johnson, which is the easier one to take, is being reserved only for people uh, in rural areas, uh, you know, the very elderly people, and also people in uh, rather inaccessible places? Given the uh, attitude of Nigerians, I guess many would just prefer to take the Johnson & Johnson dose, which is just one dose, and just move on with their lives instead of having to wait for when Nigeria is able to get more, more doses. Right. Uh, so for those Nigerians that uh, had the first dose of the AstraZeneca, uh, the fact that we've now received additional doses of uh, the AstraZeneca uh, tells you just how well we've planned it, right? So most of the people uh, who had their first dose uh, will just around... Uh, around uh, the end of August, um, some of them in September, uh, will be due for their second doses, given that uh, we've given uh, an interval of uh, up to uh, 12 to, to 16 weeks uh, in some instances. Uh, so uh, they are going to get their, uh, their vaccine, so it's not anything for them to worry about. Um, with this vaccination rollout, we're going to be giving the Moderna vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, and uh, the J&J &J vaccine. But even beyond uh, the uh, several hundred uh, or so doses of uh, the AstraZeneca that we received yesterday, we're going to be getting up to 3.9 million doses of uh, the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine uh, in the course of the next uh, few weeks. So all those people who have had their first doses are going to be covered. Uh, it's not a, a challenge for them. And by no means uh, should they be trying to, to mix and match. Uh, what the data suggests is that you should not uh, you know, be mixing your uh, AstraZeneca with your Moderna. So if you took your AstraZeneca, please wait. We have AstraZeneca vaccines more than enough coming in the pipeline for those that will be taking the second dose. And even for those who want to take, uh, start with the first dose and complete with a second dose of AstraZeneca, we're going to get, have enough uh, vaccines. And then for those um, who have taken the Moderna vaccine as first dose, please also take the Moderna vaccine as the second uh, dose. Right now, uh, the Nigerian uh, government is not recommending mixing and matching. Uh, although there is evidence um, from the World Health Organization that you can mix uh, AstraZeneca and Pfizer when we have not reached that uh, stage. And then we are still having conversations about whether we want to adopt uh, that type of uh, guideline. But for now, that is not uh, the instance. Uh, in terms of the uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, what we have right now, uh, is 177,600 doses. This is quite small compared to uh, the almost 40 million doses of the J&J &J vaccine that we're going to be receiving uh, between now and uh, the uh, first quarter of 
2022. So there's enough uh, to, to go around. Uh, right now, what we're trying to do uh, is to focus on those areas where people are in need and we need to get across uh, to them. So people that live in hard to reach areas, just because they cannot, you know, probably not be able to come for their second doses. If you have access to them for the first time, we want them to have their jobs. Then people who are very old, right, because of the challenge of having to move up and down, we also want to, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, prioritize them. And then people who live in insecure areas, because of the insecurity around them, you want to be able to seize upon the opportunity that you have to give them the job and then you know uh, it's all done. But eventually, uh, more Nigerians will have access uh, to the vaccine, uh, the G&G vaccine, particularly whether or not uh, they live in these uh, hard to reach areas or insecure areas. It's just a question of time. Uh, in the next few months, on a monthly basis, we're going to be getting additional uh, supplies of the J&J &J vaccine uh, based on what the federal government has procured. So at what point do you think that Nigeria will reach herd immunity? Because right now we're, you know, far, far away from that milestone. I think it's only 0.69% of Nigerians that have had two jabs. Right now, actually, we've been able to cover up to 2.3% of uh, uh, our targeted uh, eligible population. Uh, what we have set as a, 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 a target for the vaccination program is that within two years, uh, we're going to be able to cover uh, up to 70% of the eligible, total eligible uh, population. Now, this is not 2021 and 2022. We're saying right from when we start, uh, from March, that we started a period of two years, right? Again, we've always made it very clear that this is going to be dependent on vaccine supply, right? If the vaccines don't come, then clearly we're not going to be able to vaccinate uh, Nigeria, uh, the Nigerians with uh, the, the vaccines within those two years. But all you know, factors being equal, we expect that if the vaccines are available and uh, the communication that we're uh, giving out to Nigerians, uh, you know, uh, overcome some of the hesitancy, and then we should be able to uh, finish up the job of uh, vaccinating eligible Nigerians within uh, a span of two years. Right. Uh, real quickly, I asked earlier on about the Sinopharm Chinese vaccine. Uh, I, I want you to talk a little bit about that. Have we got it? Because uh, Navdak said they had been reviewing the papers for uh, Sinopharm. Is it in? Is it going to be part of this vaccine mix? Uh, secondly, I want to talk about the logistics. Uh, you said they will go register at the portal. What is the portal? Once they register, will people be called forward or people will have to just rush there like we had the last time and it was very, very tacky? What happened the last time? What happens? Are they going to book a date? And thirdly, what informs the decision on those hard-to-reach areas? How did you select the hard-to-reach areas? Where is a hard-to-reach area? Take, for instance, is my village somewhere in Odobulu or somewhere in Abakaliki and hard-to-reach area? What is the criteria behind you mapping out those hard-to-reach areas that will first get these G&G vaccines? Right, so uh, in terms of the uh, Sinopharm uh, vaccine, uh, those conversations are still going on between um, our our governments and the uh, government of uh, of uh, China, uh, you know, around the donation that they've provided. Yes, NAVDAC has approved it, uh, but you know, uh, until we fin finalize on those uh, conversations, you know, we're not able to determine if we're going to be getting additional doses of uh, Sinopharm. We all, of course, we want to avoid a situation where we have you know, all available, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 vaccines uh, in Nigeria, that's going to confuse uh, the, the, the picture. Uh, so the Honorable Minister of Health is, is engaging with the uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry uh, to see, you know, are we just going to get 4,000 doses of Sinopharm and that's it? Or are we looking at getting additional uh, vaccines? So all of those are going to be important. Clearly, Nigeria has taken a decision that we're going to be using uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, uh, the J&J &J vaccine, uh, and the Pfizer vaccine. We want to prioritize these, uh, vac these vaccines in Nigeria, right? So that it's not every single vaccine that you find, you know, in every nook and cr cranny. Otherwise, you begin to encourage a situation where fake vaccines might, might creep in. We want to be able to keep a good track of the vaccines that we're using in Nigeria once NAFDAQ has, uh, you know, uh, approved them uh, for use. Now, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, selection of 
uh, the uh, hard to reach areas. So what we did was to use geographic information system. So there's this uh, project known as the Grid 3 uh, that exists at the Federal Ministry of Budget and National Planning. Uh, so the federal uh, government uh, through National Primary Healthcare Development Agency has, has been using uh, GIS mapping to locate uh, populations and this is why we're able to eradicate uh, polio, right? Because we made sure that we got to every single uh, corner of, of Nigeria. Uh, using uh, GIS, we're able to locate different communities, especially communities that are often left behind uh, due to uh, how hard they are to reach. They don't have access to uh, social amenities. So we're talking about riverine areas, right? Places that are cut off from land. You have to maybe get on, the, on, a, on a canoe uh, to reach these populations. Those are hard to reach areas. And because of the extra work that you have to do to get to these communities, once you have the opportunity to go there, you seize the opportunity and optimize uh, that opportunity to vaccinate people. So those are hard to reach communities. There are people that re live behind, you know, or you have to climb mountains. For example, they live in, in, uh, in hilly areas, mountainous areas. Those are hard to reach places. It's going to be hard for you to, you know, go once, come back, go twice, you know. With those kinds of populations, we want to be able to reach them once and for all and get them there. And then there are people, you know, who uh, live in very uh, difficult and uh, insecure areas. Uh, if, for example, the military is able to provide access to those types of communities, right, uh, you want to go in and give them the J&J &J vaccine uh, once and for all. So we work uh, with different communities, we work with our partners, and we'll be able to map all of this population all across uh, Nigeria courtesy of the polio eradication program. This is one of the benefits of the uh, rather vertical uh, polio eradication program that we now have clear mapping of our population all across uh, Nigeria. And this is what we're going to be using uh, to prioritize all of these uh, hard uh, to reach communities. Well, I just need uh, a clarification in terms of protocol. There's someone that I know who took her first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine in Zaria. And then later you know, after a short period in Zaria, by the time her second dose uh, was due, she came to Lagos. And she wanted to take the second dose in Lagos. And when she pre presented the evidence that she had taken the first dose, she was told to go back to Zaria, to go and take the second dose in Zaria. That uh, if you took your first dose in Zaria, you can't take your second dose in uh, Lagos because uh, you are not in the system. Uh, is that, uh, you know, uh, what was recommended? By, the, uh, by your agency, uh, because it looks strange to me uh, that uh, that would be the case. And then secondly, are you bothered by the fact that, yes, every week uh, when you do your normal briefings with the Presidential Steering Committee, you tell Nigerians to observe non-pharmaceutical uh, guidelines and all of that, but it looks like Nigerians are generally tired of uh, COVID. Uh, life seems to have uh, returned to normal. Anything your agency is doing about that, or do I know your call mandate, is uh, immunization. Right, so uh, thank you for those brilliant questions. So first and foremost, uh, in terms of the portal, yes, the portal is available for Nigerians to go in register and they'll be able to select a date and a time when they will go to the designated health facilities and we've communicated you know these uh, health facilities in the past with the second uh, phase of the uh, vaccination rollout uh, those uh, lists are also being published uh, across uh, the states in the different uh, you know uh, media uh, houses uh, what we did was to recognize that there are Nigerians who may not be, uh, you know, uh, tech savvy, right? And they may not have access uh, to the internet. Uh, you cannot burden, the, burden them with that, uh, you know, requirement that they must go online and register. This is why we also provided the opportunity uh, for walk-ins so that people can just walk in and, uh, you know, take their vaccines. If they come in, you shouldn't be sending them uh, back. Uh, in some instances, because of the anxiety to get the vaccine ahead of time, especially in the population uh, populated areas uh, we have found a situation where there was overcrowding but we also have provision for crowd controllers right so in some places that was not managed very well but overall uh, the system is set up uh, in a way that will uh, provide the opportunity within a specific 
time period for those who have registered online to come. And then for those who want to walk in, there's also uh, uh, you know, an opportunity for them uh, to actually uh, do the work in. And we have also made provision that uh, people can uh, take their first doses uh, in any part of the country and actually uh, go to any other part and take the uh, second dose uh, because uh, that uh, information is there at the designated health facilities. But sometimes when you meet a health worker that is uh, probably uh, not, in a very, ha not having a very great day, uh, they may not be very cooperative, but no, you should be able to ha take your second doses anywhere you want to have them. You asked about uh, COVID fatigue. And people not observing. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, this is something that we're, that we're experiencing, right? Uh, that uh, uh, people are not following the non pharmaceutical, uh, you know, uh, interventions. And it is unfortunate. This is one of the uh, core messages of the Presidential Steering Committee that even after taking the COVID 19 vaccine, it is important uh, that you continue to wear your face mask, you experience, you, you, uh, you, uh, you try and uh, do hand hygiene and also uh, social uh, distance. And it is also the responsibility of not just the Presidential Steering Committee, but the media. And the media has been doing such a fantastic job. Your, your TV station has been, you know, outstanding in terms of communicating uh, the need for Nigerians to continue to observe uh, the non-pharmaceutical interventions. Uh, you know, we've done an amazing job of, you know, containing uh, this virus. You know, Nigeria has been ranked among the top countries in terms of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic response, right? We are almost there. We just need to be able to get over uh, these uh, waves, uh, you know, that come and go, uh, but we cannot relent now. We have to be resilient, resilient. We have to show resilience when it comes to making sure that we're able to, uh, you know, uh, combat this uh, pandemic and begin to return to our normal ways of living. Well, that fact cannot be overstretched and overemphasized. Thank you so much for your time this morning, Dr. Faisal Shrive.